Hello, welcome to a very Explosion Network Christmas, our podcast dedicated to the merriest of holidays. The festive season with films about Santa, snow, or being left home alone. Time of year when we all come together and argue if The Nightmare Before Christmas is a Christmas movie. I'm your host, Ashley Hobley, and helping me grow my heart three sizes and it's Christmas cheer is Dylan Blight. It's 370-something days to Christmas, Ash, and we're already behind. I mean, sorry, let me do the joke again. We're 370-something days... To Christmas 2023, and we're already behind. Hopefully people get that joke. And then Jin and Dash just listen to the spoiler cast episodes for everything. That would be awkward because the, 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 the show was invented for the Santa Claus. So. Yeah. But you didn't answer the question. What? Is the nightmare before Christmas a Christmas movie? Yeah. It's not even a question. I thought it was a statement. No, it was a question. Huh? Who? It's a Halloween movie. No, it's a Christmas movie. It's about the king of Halloween. It's about Santa Claus. Nah, he's just he just happens to be there. You know, some bystanders. He gets kidnapped. Anyway. <laughs> On this f- season finale of A Very Explosion Network Christmas, so did something a bit different. Every year, a uh, bunch of TV shows put out their own TV specials dedicated to the rest of holidays. Uh, so, I've asked everybody here at the Explosion Network to give... Uh, list suggest a festive themed episode of television, and uh, we've we've watched quite a few. You know, so we'll talk about them, and then I think we're going to rank them at the end. All right, and then, and then right. potentially an ongoing list for next year. All right, all right. So first up, we've got Kieran's suggestion: Peep Show, season seven, episode five, seasonal beatings. Where's the turkey, Jeremy? What? The turkey. Where's the turkey? I thought you were getting the turkey. You what? No turkey! You fucking idiot, Jeremy! You total fucking idiot! That was your job, you fucking moron! You cretin! You're a fuckhead! That's what you are! A fucking shithead! It was a joke, Mark. I was joking. It was a Christmas joke. Uh, Oh, I see. Oh. Of course I've got a turkey. It's an organic turkey. I took ages researching it online. It's going to be delicious. That, that looks like a lovely turkey. I'm sorry, I, I flew off the handle a bit. That wasn't very Christmassy. No, it wasn't. Directed by Becky Martin, written by Jesse Armstrong and Sam Bain. Mark has his family over to the flat for a Christmas dinner, as well as Dobby, who he's finally going out with, except he hasn't told his parents yet. Uh, Dylan, have you... Are you a big Peep Show fan? Yes. Um. So I was going to ask this question. I've seen all these things before. Have you? I've watched everything except this one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Also, I used to. I haven't watched all the Peep Show, but I would like to finish it. But I've watched um the majority of it. I've probably missed a few episodes here. And there. I mean, it's a British show. There's six episodes a season. It's like pretty yep. hard to. <laughs> like, it's pretty quick. You you literally watch an entire put, season. Like, I think I read nine seasons, fifty one episodes. <laughs> Yeah, so it's pretty easy to smash through. Um, Peep Show f- is very funny, very dry, s- particular sense of humor. The way, of course, if people can watch the show, it's, um, it's filmed from literally like the point of view of the characters. Like the camera is always supposed to be someone's like eyes that looking at someone. Like mm. that's how all the camera angles are set up and stuff. Um, but yeah, I feel like this. This I, the other thing I was thinking is I was nearly going to rank these episodes in. Um, Christmas like, just. what ones felt the most Christmassy, like, related to Christmas, you know what I mean? So, this one I, I definitely feel like was uh, a, a, a true Christmas sort of episode, because it is literally on Christmas Day, it's family coming over for Christmas, it's the awkwardness of the Christmas, um, and yeah, I thought this was a, I think it's a very funny episode, the, the just the, <laughs> the, the way Mark reacts to so many, <laughs> the, to everything going on with Christmas, and um, his, um, and then the dad's just a, absolutely That's sexist dick, yeah. racist dickhead which is quite yeah, typical family behavior at christmas so um yeah i very I, I yes very british uh <laughs> racist <very> british. <laughs> um yeah i liked it i think it's a it's a fun christmas episode for a funny show yeah i thought it was quite funny as well um i was thrown at first uh as someone who has not watched the show by the dual narration 
that like they both have their inner monologues. Uh, yeah, depends whose camera point of view. Whose camera, you, and then, yeah. but even when it's not like who it's focused on, they'll you'll hear inner dialogue. Um, yeah. But that kind of threw me at first. I'm like, oh, okay, this is an interesting mechanic that they're doing in this. Um, but uh, not uncommon. But yeah, it just actually, I think the uncommon thing is to have multiple characters doing it in the same. You're right. Well, it's only the two main characters. You don't. I yeah. don't recall. I don't think in the show you ever hear anyone outside the two main characters. No, I can't imagine you would. No. Uh, but no, I mean it's a classic Christmas trope, or like any meet the parents trope uh, of you, you wanting to keep them a secret, and then you know it all kind of blowing up in your face. Uh, classic Christmas dinner not being what you hope it's going to be, and then you know getting your hopes up for good presents and getting tongs. I think maybe the worst present possible. I can't think of any. Yeah, like two for two for ten or whatever. Two for one. Yeah. <laughs> two for one, yeah. So. Uh, yeah. I thought it was uh, quite good, you know. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to rush out and watch more Pip Show probably anytime soon, but I thought it was enjoyable. It definitely is, it's definitely a show I don't think you would particularly like because a lot of it relies on cringe, embarrassing humor. Sort of yeah, thing, that's so. what I figured. Yeah. Because yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there was a fair bit of some cringy moments and that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah. Okay. Whether it, the, him getting socks of a sexual position, that's yep. that's a bold choice from your mum. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, they're pretty obsessed with Ratatouille. When, when did this come out? I can't this episode? Yeah. Oh, ages ago. Probably over Yeah, so probably when that movie years. was coming out. <laughs> Just Maybe, weird, yeah. some of the name checks and that kind of stuff uh, throughout the episode. But yeah, I thought it was quite good. Moving on to our next episode. Cherie's Choice, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Season 3, Episode 10. yippee ki Yeah by Re- Rebecca Asher, written by Lakshmi Sundaram. Jake, Charles, and Gina get into trouble while doing last-minute Christmas shopping. Terry tries to make it through the holidays without a call from the precinct, and Amy takes part in a polar swim with Holt and Diaz. Dill, what do you think of this episode of Brooklyn Nine-Nine? Well, it's just... Jake getting to do Die Hard, so, like... Yes. It's very good. Because if you like Die Hard, this is just perfect sort of fun with that. I like the part that then, like, when he's finally captured and everything, and the dude actually finally comes with an accent, and he's like, yeah, it's finally a real bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it's a funny episode. Although I definitely don't think it's as Christmassy as any of the others that we've watched. So, like, it is set at Christmas time, but really they could be, like, birthday shopping or... So what you're saying like, is Die Hard is not a Christmas movie. No, Die Hard's more of a Christmas movie than this is. Okay. <laughs> I mean, they're doing Christmas shopping, you know, and learning the value of friendship and flamethrowers. Uh, flamethrowers, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a classic, like, thing that you always want to do. You want to use an aerosol spray with a lighter, right? Did you ever do yeah. that as a kid? I mean, when I was in, when I was, yeah, when I was in high school, I just fucking burn everything, yeah. Yeah, and then the fire so would go in can, can and you'd freak out. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll blow one up. It's fine. <laughs> I'm here to tell tale. No, we just threw the can into the creek and then ran away. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, But yeah, obviously, this is a really fun episode. I've enjoyed it every single time I've watched it. I think now I maybe understand... Well, I understood all the jokes about Die Hard before even watching Die Hard. I mean, this is one of those... One of multiples of the Die Hard parodies, you know, you get made me not desperate to watch the film because... Like, oh, this is like a condensed version of the movie. I didn't need to watch Die no, Hard. No, that, no, watch Die Hard. Don't listen to this guy. Come on. What are you but doing? then I watched Die Hard and it's a very good movie. So, yeah. you know, that, just all the parodying of it made me not feel like I needed to watch it. What's a parody though? Like, he's literally just going around being like, He pretty much plays out Hans. the entire movie. You'll be Hans. You're good. Whatever. Like, he's just naming them all after the bad guys in Die Hard. Yeah. And then they do the whole, you know, the twist is, you know, he gives up the the John McClane moment for mm. for our old uh, Charles. So who butchers the the catchphrase? Yeah, you'd be skipping m- mother truckers or whatever reason. You'd be kayak <laughs> mother truckers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pretty sure I got it. Uh, I do love Terry as well, standing up to his co- his brother in law Zeke, snapping finally. You don't even have a job, Zeke. <laughs> You're not cooking up anything. 
Uh, and then, you know, the whole polar bath or whatever that the others are doing in the cold. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just a reason to get swim. them away from everybody else, but. Yeah. But yeah, that's fun. And then, you know, all the vulture stuff, you know, the vultures are a pretty solid antagonist, you know, as well. So yeah, that's very enjoyable. All right, let's move on to the next episode. Dylan's Choice. It's unsurprisingly, it's an episode of Doctor Who. Season 7, Episode 6, The Snowmen. There's a man called the Doctor. He lives on a cloud in the sky, and all he does all day, every day, is to stop all the children in the world ever having bad dreams. Am I going to have the nightmare tonight? When you find something brand new in the world, something you've never seen before, what's the next thing you look for? Doctor! A grenade! Doctor doesn't help people. What's your name? Clara. What is that? I said I'd feed you. I didn't say who to. Listen to me, the snow's feeding off your thoughts. It will build an army of ice. And it will be the last day of humanity on this planet. Directed by Saul Metzstein. Written by Stephen Moffat. London, 1892. Snow is evolving, turning into icy monstrosities, but there is no concern for the Doctor, who has clearly given up trying to save the universe, leaving it to a clever young governess named Clara to save the day. Uh, Dylan, why'd you pick this? Um, it's probably one of the better Christmas specials. Well, I mm. guess personal opinion, but like obviously Doctor is a lot of good Christmas specials. That used to be the thing I did before the. They were like, nah, we're out of Christmas stuff. Let's do the New Year's, New Year's specials. But yeah, I I loved watching this. It's been a while since I've um watched older older i mean anything past like the, the last the 13th doctor but oh, just I, obviously if you want to hear my thoughts on doctor who well, listen to you know the fish fingers and cuss our doctor who podcast but man watching this i was like fuck doctor who's good hey <laughs> <laughs> when it's good it's good it and good, um yeah. this was just a it is such a fun time with matt smith and just the um i forgot that this is when he has his uh his sidekicks coming around everywhere i can't remember sontaran's name off the top of my head but like just that the whole eel scene or the whatever the forget eel thing that's so yeah. fucking funny. <laughs> the mind worm, <laughs> the, the mind goes to the thing, comes back. What is? Who are you? <laughs> what eel? Do you want me to get the eel? And goes down, and gets and the, just Clara the just sitting there on the side, Clara just, just watching. Clearly silly how this is going to play yeah. out. Yeah, it's such a funny episode, but and it's it's interesting watching it because like. Obviously, I know how it all plays out. I know what comes after this and before this, like the 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 Dalek episode where she, she um, that's where you first like met her, and you have the whole reveal. Then he's like, "It's the same girl," and all this sort of stuff. But yeah. it's yeah, it's it's this episode. I think works very well on its own as well. Um, what's McCall is the bad guy? Oh, what the fuck's his name? Uh, Richard Grant. Remember. Yeah, Richard Grant, like so good. Just I mean, he's just being Richard e. Grant, but yeah. it's just also something about Ian him, McKellen as the. The That's the voice of the um greater the snow the snow or the greater intelligence yeah um but yeah I I love this snow snowmen are evil looking there's like so this is definitely an episode that would scare kids which is the which Doctor Who tries at times but yeah I think it's a, a great great Christmas special uh yeah I thought it was a really good episode as well obviously um one I watched in the past and really enjoyed obviously Clara having you know Jenna Coleman uh like this is like probably her biggest. Well, it was her second appearance, though. I think the first one, it was kind of confirmed that she was going to be taking over as the companion. It was uh, confirmed, but then it was weird when she died at that episode. And then she yeah. died at the end of this one again, and people are like, Wait, what the, what's what the going on? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, she doesn't, well, she does die, and then she you see present day Clara at the end of the episode. Yeah. Um, yeah, just a really solid story. In- it's very interesting how pivotal this episode kind of is in that, season and kind of that run of matt smith's where it's post uh amy, rory. amy and rory leaving uh or being He's depressed. You know, sent to the past uh yeah. and him kind of being super depressed and like upset about that. to take on yeah. a companion again uh and then this introducing clara or the impossible girl uh mm-hmm. concept uh and then also introducing the greater intelligence will play a bigger role throughout the season um yeah yeah, I think it's you know, overall really good. Historically, very good. I'll admit, I ended up just watching the next episode right after. <laughs> <laughs> I was so tempted. It, like, it just auto-played because I was watching, do you watch on Stan? Yeah. 
Yeah, I was also going to say, and started autoplaying. I was like, fuck, I better watch actually something else. But I was so, like, I was enjoying it that much. So I was like, fuck, I just want to watch one more. Clara, yeah. yeah. Johnny Coleman's so great. Matt Smith's so fun. Um, having them all together again. Uh, yeah. I, I don't think it's super Christmassy, other than it being winter and cold. No, I'd agree. It's not, it's not super Christmassy. But that's because, I guess, Doctor Who has done the more super Christmassy episodes before. So yes. this, that's sort of just the... the yeah, it's just the events that happen around Christmas time. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the idea of a consciousness that requires human thought to become sentient uh, there's a lot of big sci-fi ideas here that mm. i guess will kind of go went over my head and stuff but you know got my member berries going on i was like remember stephen moffat <laughs> remember when he, remember he used to write good doctor who i was like yeah <laughs> yeah it's good, times. Uh, good times back in the day all right let's talk about the last episode my one and it's the simpsons Season 7, episode 11, Marge Be Not Proud. Okay, people. One, two, three. <laughs> I thought I told you. No returns for busted merchandise. What are you doing to my son? I'm afraid your son broke the 11th commandment. Thou shalt not steal. Well, that's crazy. Bud's not a shoplifter. He's just a little boy. Oh, sure. Now he's just a little boy stealing little toys. But someday he'll be a grown man. Stealing stadiums and uh, quarries. My son may not be perfect, but I know in my heart he's not a shoplifter. Fine, play the tape. Then everyone can see you've got the wrong boy. Wait! Mom, I don't want you to see this. I did it. Directed by Stephen Dean Moore, uh, written by Mike Scully. Marge's relationship with Bart is strange when he is caught shoplifting before Christmas. Now, I'm pretty sure I had a VHS tape of uh, like a collection of Christmas episodes of The Simpsons. That would be ones that we you know we just end up watching, just play the tape yeah. over and over and over again. Um, so this is one on that VHS that you know I remember fondly. Um, kind of a, like a pivotal episode. Uh, just some of the jokes in this episode have obviously kind of stood the stone stand of have stuck around. Whether it's all the stuff about Bone Storm or and Thrill House, uh, or you know Lee Carvello's putting challenge. Um, but you know when I look back on it, this was <laughs> for a show that so often was something that parents didn't want your kids to watch. This was one that kind of had a very strong message, <laughs> and probably stopped many children from shoplifting i feel like Don't steal. um but yeah i think that the second half of the episode where obviously marge learns that bart has shoplifted and just treats him kind of her heart's kind of broken uh is hard to watch kind of like the part the where Bart's like laying in bed and then she Marchka is in Tucky and Lisa and you hear it and then he's like yeah. waiting and he's like, Oh, I guess it's Tucky in time and she just like closes the door. <laughs> good night. Yeah. yeah good Doesn't night. wake him up. Uh yes. <laughs> Has his hot chocolate marshmallow. Just yep. suck up all the hot chocolate. Sucks up all the hot chocolate, yeah. Very sad. Uh yeah, well Dylan, what do you think of the episode? Yeah, I mean I've watched this episode a million times, it's been around for ages, either on TV or um like, I had DVDs, like, of the first, what, like, 10 seasons, probably. So, I used to check on random Simpsons episodes when I was, like, on high school around Christmas time and stuff. I'm pretty sure I've seen this episode a lot. Um, Stands test time, though, surprise. Uh, no, like, bad taste jokes, I didn't feel. So, that was <laughs> that's always a, <laughs> uh, a pass when you go back and watch something you haven't watched in a while. But, um, yeah, it's a, it's a decent Christmas episode. I, much like the previous one, don't feel like it's super Christmassy. Because it's like, it just, it is set around in the lead up to Christmas and he steals because he wants a present, but also like, you could just done this before his birthday sort of thing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, but yeah, still a fun Christmas story with um, some funny little moments in it and a message about don't steal kids because you'll end up like Bart. Yeah. You'll end up in the and back room of a, you're in the with yeah, a weird a security, security office. Yeah. Some of the animation here is quite interesting. Like the. 
the security guard he imagines in the back seat of the car. Mm. So, like, that design is quite interesting and that kind of stuff. So, although it was weird, I don't I think this is the first time I watched The Simpsons like on Disney Plus in the like same yeah in the years since, yeah. and some of it is a bit rough. <laughs> I know mm. how it's rough, but it is. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, just like some of the eyes didn't look quite right. Like they were quite like. Or double done or something. I don't know. That's it. I haven't watched The Simpsons in years, and this not because I was enjoying it as much as Doctor Who episode, but like I was like when this episode was wrapping up, I pulled out my laptop and I was doing some other stuff on it, and I just sort of let it roll in the background for a bit because I was like, oh, I forgot how easy Simpsons of a show Simpsons is just that in the background, and you don't really need to pay attention. Yeah, because I've watched it in ages. All right. Uh, so that's uh all the episodes we watched. Uh. What do you, if you had to go gut feel right now, how would you rank these four films? Uh, TV. Now, episodes? am I ranking them on, do you want me to rank them on how good I think the episode is or do my thing of like, I can give you two lists. I can give you my ranking on, like, I think how it's got to be on how good they are. Yeah. Okay, just on how good they are. All right, I'm going to go Doctor Who, Peep Show, Brooklyn Nine Nine, Simpsons. Wow. Um, not that I think they are, any of them are bad. I don't think any of these episodes are bad. That's just my. I would go. Ranking. Doctor, no, I would go The Simpsons. Wow, Brooklyn Nine Nine, Doctor Who, Peep Show. So that, that tracks. Like, that's it. Tracks like you, you list, yeah. My personality. So yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's that's a kind of it for Christmas this year. That's it's all over, Red Rover. What'd yeah. you get? I don't know yet. Disappointment. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Another year of disappointment. Lee Carbello's putting challenge. <laughs> putting challenge. You've picked three wood. I suggest driver. You picked <laughs> three wood. <laughs> uh, all right. Let us know what you thought of these different Christmas episodes. Of, uh, and let us know what Christmas episodes we should watch next season of A Very Explosion Network Christmas. Uh, you know, maybe we'll compile this. We'll do some more next year. Uh, but yeah. Start airing in August. <laughs> Start airing in August. Uh, all right. If you want to help us out here at a very explosion hour Christmas, if you've enjoyed what we've done, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or on Podchaser. Tell people about the show. Leave us five stars. Anyone can leave five stars. Or if you want to financially support us here at the Explosion Network, head over to our coach page at explosion.com slash supports. All right. Yes. So this brings us to the end of this season. Uh, so thank you very much for listening. Uh, it's been really enjoyable doing this show. Uh, Dylan, thanks for being a part of it. And uh, ho, ho, ho. until next year, we hope you have a very explosion network Christmas. Christmas.